Hello, this is Ashwini and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be covering our REST API interview questions. So, what is very first question is uh, telling the difference between a controller and a REST controller. So, let me first give you the basic answer that uh, you will give in an interview and interview will throw you out. Okay, <laughs> then I will give you the proper explanation. So, I want you to just do not answer anything uh, in a bookish language. That's why. Okay, so if you having a basic idea about controller and rest controller so how will you answer like with the rest controller uh, you get a response body right because in uh, when you use rest controller at the top of your method you have like at the top of your uh, class not method you don't need to use a uh, response body right annotation automatically it, because it come handy with the, this rest controller which means you don't need to separately annotate your class with a handle method okay but if you answer this this is perfectly fine nothing wrong in that but this is not a only difference this is not a only difference okay so you can ask uh, the interview can ask another question like what is the response body right and from this question only the interview can ask you what is a model and what is a view because they are asking you the controller and when you talk about the controller mvc basic controller then the thing will come into the model and view okay so now how you can answer this question in your interview this line you can use firstly but when your interviewer say like okay give me the basic more detail okay then you can say okay so first you answer this and tell okay how we are using this like rest controller that's perfectly fine and now after that you can explain this diagram uh, and uh, internal architecture of controller so this is very very important question like i uh, attend uh, almost uh just let's suppose i attend a 10 interview and this question is asked in nine interview okay difference between controller and a rest controller so let's see this is your request and it is a dispatcher circulate okay you if you having idea about a survey then you might be having a uh, this thing in your mind so once a request comes to the dispatcher circulate it serve your request to the request handler like uh, handler mapping and it's come back and it said okay come to the controller controller give the model and view and it's come to the view resolver and view resolver give you the view name on the top of like name and it come to the model and it give you the response so how many component you have here as you can check your all the requests coming to the 10 step and component one two three four right it will a dispatcher okay now come to the rest controller so only three thing is here like uh, dispatcher it already available in last one and handler mapping and desk controller so no view resolver right so in this case you are not dealing with the model and view map so directly you are just sending a request and response right when you are getting a request and it come to the handler because dispatcher directly not send to the any controller request it will throw the request to the handler because this guy know like from which controller you have to give the request okay so this is the best answer of this question and just keep it this uh, annotation handy uh, because this will come into the next question and i will ask you okay so now come to the next question that is what are i dependent operations and why is i dependency important okay so let me tell you uh, the basic idea about it so when your request change something i dependent if this is making you confused so do not worry about it let me tell you the basic idea about it so that is if your request if your request change the state of the object okay then that is not add opponent if your request you are hit multiple time multiple time it's not changing a request like not changing state of your object then it will be a dependent operation okay so what are the dependent operations in rest that is get okay just basic example okay and you can say like uh, what are not dependent that you can post okay because you whenever you are throwing a post request okay every time it change the object and it create the new data into your database so just read it once there are some http methods example get okay which produce same response no matter how many times you use it use them example sending a multiple get request to the same uri okay if you hit the same request multiple times you will get the same response okay without any side effect it is known as idempotent okay now on the other hand the post is not idempotent because if you send a multiple post request it will result a multiple resource creation in a server 
or we can say to the database but again put is add opponent if you are using it it update a same uh, resource okay so i hope you are getting an idea but yeah i i was giving a sapient uh, client interview okay i am giving a sapient client interview so this question uh, asked in that interview so at the time i don't have that much idea about it so yeah but after that i read it okay so do not make this mistake you just uh, mark it each question whatever question i just cover in this class slide all the questions are super important okay do not think these are a uh, question uh, not important because i just took it from my personal experience okay so next question what are the advantage of the rast template so if you tell your interviewer you have worked on spring boot okay if you worked on spring boot and microservices then then the, this guy will ask you the several questions like design part and the interviewer ask you the design part interviewer ask you the microservice architecture microservice architecture and this will ask you the to how the two microservice communicate to each other so there are several method to communicate each other so then they will not ask you directly the rest template because they will say advantage then they got to know if you answer this question they got to know that you are working on you have worked on rest template okay so the rest template is the implementation of a template method pattern so it's not any kind of uh, you can say uh, predefined implementation on that but it is a like template method pattern yeah it is a predefined thing which you got with the framework okay but it is a template method pattern in the spring framework okay implementation of that because i told you in some uh, videos like what is the framework collections of some boilerplate code and interfaces and you are giving implementation when you are using this thing okay and it is a rest template is implementation of that method framework okay method pattern similar to other popular template classes like jdbc template and jms template it is also simplify the interaction with restful web services on the client side you can use it uh, consume restful web services very easily as shown in the example okay so example i have not mentioned it because i have uh, just make a lot of project on my channel you can just go like a spring boot uh, or microservice project there we are communicating one microservice to the another microservice there we have to use a rest template okay so do not worry about it you can found a video on my channel okay so is rest normally a stateless this is also very important question because when i am asking you this question i am just expecting like you have an idea of iso model what iso model uh, network model okay because all the layers application layer network layer transport layer all the layers because you know that when we are saying rest is uh, stateless we are talking about because it totally depend on http right http and http also a stateless protocol right and where the http work in the iso layer you have this idea definitely you have to learn this okay because when you answer this question rest is normally stateless or not then i am assuming you are having this uh, conversation already in your mind okay so let's see yes rest apis should be a stateless because it is a based on http right and which is also a stateless now if you say http is a stateless then i told you right you instantly you get a question from your interviewer how http is a uh, your stateless so this is not only question we are covering i am just telling you more question from the discussion okay so you say http then you have to explain your that whole network diagram and on which layer this protocol is working application layer or network layer you have to learn this and then accordingly you have to give the answer okay a request in rest api should contain all the detail required to the process it should not rely on previous or next request or some data that's why it's called a stateless right data maintain at a server side and example session okay because they not man, uh, like uh, contain or man um, or uh, managing any session on a server side so rest specification uh, puts a constraint to make a stateless and you should keep that in mind while designing your rest api okay so next question what does request mapping annotation do so i told you right on very first question just put this handy because it will come in next questions so when you are working in uh, rest api okay so this question i can ask you to implement by coding or i can ask you directly if i want to 
check okay so this request mapping is a request mapping annotation is used to map a web request to the spring control method you can map request based on the http method like get post because in request mapping you can say you can give a value and you can give method type right you can give two things so at a method type you can easily mention here like whatever the like get is or post is if you have worked on i think you have an idea about it okay so how you will do you can say request mapping and method is equals to request post okay and consume uh, like you are getting a request application json and you can say request body we will not talk about it because it's not a part of our question okay so basically request mapping so moving to the next question but this is important okay if you are worked on just keep this in mind sometime we forgot this and uh, we are not doing good in our interview so next question is controller a studio type or is rest controller is a studio type uh, you know that right uh, in a spring framework some uh, like four uh, annotations are stereotype and what is the meaning of stereotype this is a question for you i can answer this but i want you to comment down this question answer of this question okay uh, like what is stereotype? some guy already asked me and i answered it in some videos comment section do not go for that just answer me okay uh, like what why this controller is a stereotype and if this is also then why this look first give me the answer then i will give you the first let me tell you the answer of this question then you can give me the answer of that okay yes both controller and rest controller are a studio type okay and uh, the controller is actually a specification uh, spe specialization of spring and a component and a stereotype annotation so it they mean to say that if you use a controller automatically your component will be come in a picture okay and rest controller is a specialization of controller so you use a rest controller automatically controller became rest way back there. it is only not only a combination of response body and controller but it is also give more meaning to your controller that your controller the restful uh, controller okay now let me tell you the question what i am asking previously we told right these are the stereotype annotations or these are the stereotypes so why this name only a stereotype give me the reason behind it okay and what is the meaning of it just tell me in the comment section i'm waiting for your comment when you need a response body annotation in spring uh, framework okay because as you check we have uh, used this previous question in previous question okay so the response body annotation can be put on a method to indicate that return type should be directly written to the http response body not placed in model or interruption model view so i told you right when you are using a rest controller you are this automatically come handy with the rest controller response body because in previous question if i uh, checked that then is a response body and controller right when you are using a rest controller so so that's why i say you don't need to deal with model or view names so I already show you the architecture of both the rest controller. So when you are using this request mapping, you can directly say path hello because this is your API path, right? And method is equals to request method put, right? And this is your response body. Okay. If you are using a controller on top of your class, if suppose you are using here, then you have to use response body. If you are using a rest controller, then you don't need to use this. Okay. Now, next question, what does a path variable do in a spring MVC and why it is a useful in rest spring? So if you have worked on it, then this is a very common thing, but most of the time we forgot when we are into the interview. So it is one of the useful annotation in a spring MVC, which allow you to read the value from URI. So what I want to say, let's suppose you are having this uh, URL, myapp.com book and 101. So what is this? You are getting a value in your URI and how you will read in your code. You can say if you want to extract a 101, the ID in the form of ID, then you can say path variable annotation you have to use in a Spring app. I hope you are getting it right. Now, when you need to use a response status annotation, is Spring MVC very, very important question. Okay, so let's check. So the response status annotation is required during a error handling. Okay, if you have an idea and you use a custom annotations, uh, sorry, custom exception handling, then 
I think you are getting it right. In Spring MVC, REST response status annotation which allow you to send custom HTTP status code along with the proper error message in case of exception. So just read this line after I will show you something okay not now. Now check response status you just put it here and you say like value HTTP not found. So let's suppose you are making uh, this class like book not found exception and you just extend a runtime exception. So you say like uh, on top of anything you just place this like response status and you are giving a reason no such book okay so what is the exception if this exception is thrown from any handler method then error code 404 with reason no such book found will be written to the client so you want to say like if any method throw okay in any method throw a any error which is the exception type or runtime exception you will give the error code 404 like you are giving error code 404 here okay and no such book found i hope you are getting it by we are using a response status okay so i hope you enjoy the video and you love what other question we have discussed i will uh, see you in our next video with some other topic if you have something just comment down i will happy to answer all the questions take care bye bye